Juneteenth is a federal holiday in the United States commemorating the emancipation of enslaved African Americans. Originating in Galveston, Juneteenth has since been observed annually in various parts of the United States, often broadly celebrating African American culture. Juneteenth really celebrates freedom. But whenever I talk about it, I always consider, are we really free? You know, I prefer to use the term free-ish to just signify the concept of freedom. But Juneteenth is celebrated on June 19th. It began in 1865, and it's commemorated as the date when the last enslaved Americans were notified of their freedom in Texas. President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1, 1863, promising freedom to the slaves in Texas and all the other rebellious parts of Southern secessionist states of the Confederacy. Although the Emancipation Proclamation declared an end to slavery in the Confederate states, it did not end slavery in states that remained in the Union. So we have to go back in history. We have to remember that at the time, the Emancipation Proclamation really only applied to the Confederate states, because we know that the Union, what we know as the Union states, they already had uh, the Emancipation Proclamation. And so we have to remember that Texas still had enslaved Africans that did not know that they were free. And so a whole two and a half years went by during this time. And again, we just have to remember that the Emancipation Proclamation had very little impact on Texas because there were few Union troops who were there to enforce it. And so with the surrender of General Lee in April 1865, and also with uh, who we know as the Union General, who was Gordon Granger, when he arrived in Galveston, Texas to notify the enslaved Americans that yes, they had been free. And for two and a half years, they were finally free and the forces of the Union were finally able to resist. The holiday is considered the longest running African-American holiday and has been called America's second Independence Day. So news came to Galveston, Texas, again on June 19th, 1865. And so the very next year, 1866, enslaved Black Americans in Texas began celebrating this day, and it was known as Jubilee Day. Now, it's also been known as Black Independence Day or Freedom Day. While that date did not actually mark the unequivocal end of slavery, even in Texas, and emancipation has been celebrated on other dates, June 19th came to be a day of shared commemoration across the United States. Independence Day as we know it, right? It's July 4th, 1776. However, African Americans were still enslaved at that time. It was not independence for them. It was not independence for them. And so that is one of the reasons, the main reason that many African Americans do not celebrate, nor do they even recognize sometimes July 4th, because we have to go back in history and remember that now we have Juneteenth, it's in our minds for many of us. And so we know that the very last group of enslaved Americans were notified that they had been free in 1865, although in July 4th, 1776, we celebrate Independence Day. In the early 20th century, economic and political forces led to a decline in Juneteenth celebrations. From 1890 to 1908, Texas and all former Confederate states passed new constitutions or amendments that effectively disenfranchised black people, excluding them from the political process. White-dominated state legislatures passed Jim Crow laws imposing second-class status. The Great Depression forced many black people off farms and into the cities to find work, where they had difficulty taking the day off to celebrate. May we continue to breathe fire, siphon ether from the molecular until ourselves live beyond the cellular and our energy is time's infinity. May we know not the temptation to quit, never halting our predisposition to endlessly want to fix and recreate, stand up, never satiate the powers that seek to destroy the very core of who we are, 
may we continue to shine like stars. Constellations in our concrete prisons, leading minds north to the horizon where the sky's sun is our salvation and unity is unified without uniformity, casting off the chains of conformity. May we guide with knowledge, pinky fingered linked with compassion, evoking the prayers of our ancestors with agile action. Falling back to allow our young ones to share the burden of this beast, telling our stories to ensure the continuation of this work at the very least. May we continue to breathe fire. May we continue to bring fire. May we continue to be fire. Blazing bright to burn down what is unjust. Becoming the flame is a must. Burn, baby. Burn, baby. Burn, baby, burn. May your light never extinguish. In 1997, activist Ben Haith created the Juneteenth flag, which was further refined by illustrator Lisa Jean Grave. In 2000, the flag was first hoisted at the Roxbury Heritage State Park in Boston by Haith. The star at the center represents Texas and the extension of freedom for all African Americans throughout the whole nation. The burst around the star represents a nova and the red curve represents a horizon standing for a new era for African Americans. The red, white, and blue colors represent the American flag, which shows that African Americans and their enslaved ancestors are Americans and the national belief in liberty and justice for all citizens. I really love the flag because it's more than colors to me. It, it's also the shape. And so let's talk about the colors for a minute. So it's, it has red, white, and blue. And we have to recognize that that strictly goes to, to state the fact and reiterate the fact that these are Americans, first and foremost that African-Americans are Americans. And so that's a big part of it. But I think the other big piece is to recognize the shape that's there. And that when you consider the shape there, it's almost as if you can see mountains, hills, and valleys, and it continues in a circle. And some people believe that that symbolizes the continual fight for reaching higher. And also that there are challenges along the way, but that it includes reaching higher, increasing, improving, doing more, but also recognizing that there will be challenges, but they can be overcome. Texas was the first state to recognize the date by enacted law in 1980. By 2002, eight states officially recognized Juneteenth. And four years later, 15 states recognized the holiday. By 2008, just over half the states recognized Juneteenth in some way. By 2016, 45 states were recognizing the occasion. That year, Opal Lee, often referred to as the grandmother of Juneteenth, began a walk from Fort Worth, Texas to Washington, D.C. to advocate for a federal holiday. When it was officially made a federal holiday on June 17th, 2021, it became one of five date-specific federal holidays along with New Year's Day, Independence Day, Veterans Day, and Christmas Day. Opal Lee is someone that we need a holiday after her. And the reason I say that is because she is extremely significant to Juneteenth becoming a federal holiday. She did the things that really many of us can continue to do to honor Juneteenth. So first of all, she was an educator, but then over the, over the years, she became an activist. And for decades, she promoted this idea of Juneteenth for decades. She would march. She um, promoted a walk that she herself did in, in her late her 80s. And one of the most important things that she did was she promoted a um, signature campaign, which received 1.6 million signatures to justify why we needed Juneteenth to be a federal holiday. And so her efforts led to Juneteenth becoming a federal holiday. And that is why she is known as the grandmother of Juneteenth. How did we get crowned a reputation for being late when most things creep snail pace towards us, crawling at an agonizingly slow speed that teases death before arrival, often unaware and unjust?
The news of our freedom so late that two winters of hail and mist came quicker to Texas than General Granger's order, formally informing Texans that the enslaved were now free. How did this reputation of always being late fall on the shoulders of you and me? Being on time is not something we struggle with more so than anyone else. And most times we were right on time, concerned with the needs of others, not focused solely on self. We are the dedication of Harriet Tubman, risking life before a proclamation that came two centuries too late. We are her selfishness. We are her courage. We are her will. She didn't wait. We are the lyrical truth of Langston Hughes, the honesty of Zora Neale. We are the unapologetic voice of Ida B. Wells. We are at the heart of Martin's fiery appeal. We are the bravery in Billy's performance of the powerful song, Strange Fruits. For every policy and law regarding equity in this country, our activist work has been the anchoring root. We are right on time with our language, our style, and the ways we bring things into fruition. We are radical, innovative, progressive, and proactive, on point and on mission. We are Fannie Lou Hamer, Ella Baker, Nina Turner, Medgar Evers, and Maya Angelou. We are the Harlem Renaissance, Black Wall Street, the Million Man March, jazz, funk, soul, and the blues, too. We are right on time, right on point, despite the dishonesty we encounter due to race. We are unrelenting and unbreakable despite centuries of violence directed toward us while living in this place. Colored people's time, it seems to me, ought to be the description of how one shows up despite obstacles placed in their way. Because here we are, still standing, still shining, still taking up space, continuing to rise and seize the day. Next time someone tells you that it seems you are late and running on CPT, Tell them that you are right on time for wherever and whenever you exactly need to be. I'm not here to fire you up. If you're not already fired up, you shouldn't be in this room. If this victory isn't worth all you have to give, then leave. But now, right now is your chance to be a part of a victory the world will remember forever. <laughs> victory over cancer. This victory isn't just happening. It isn't inevitable. What does hope mean? Now is our time, your time. You may save someone you love. Time is very precious. Today's cancer research is tomorrow's victory, a victory that is there for the taking. Grab it. How was that? Now that was a great halftime speech. Let's go win. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Possibilities are all around us. Everywhere we look, we see opportunity in unexpected places. And when we share our knowledge, vision, and connections, we turn great ideas into action in communities all around the world that we call home. Like transforming an old bus to feed hungry children, or providing life-saving equipment to those who need it most. From fighting disease, to rebuilding schools, together, we can make real change happen. We're Rotary. We are people of action. Get involved today at rotary.org action.